Remember her from Land of the Lost? At 61, this is her now. A lot of TV shows and movies played a big role in pop culture in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s. Life wasn't always about Netflix. In those days, just seeing a black and white screen was enough to get everyone excited. Did the kids from the Brady Bunch or the Partridge family ever get lost? Let's go back in time and find out what happened. Barry Williams Barry Williams had guest roles in Here Comes the Bride, The Mod Squad, and Bartleby, the Scrivener, before he played Greg Brady on The Brady Bunch when he was 15. In the 1970s, the role made him one of the teen heartthrobs. Now that the show was over, he focused on theater. In 1990, his book Growing Up Brady, I Was a Teenage Greg, was a big hit in the New York Times. These days, he works as a spokesman for the TV network MeTV. Linda Blair Linda's first jobs were as a commercial actress and model, but her role as the demon-possessed child Regan McNeil in The Exorcist, one of the scariest movies ever made, shook the world. She became well-known for her role and was nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. During the late 1970s, Linda got into trouble with the state because she was accused of drug abuse. After that, she couldn't get her business back on track. The star used to run her own animal rights group called the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation. Justin Henry Through his role as Billy Kramer, the cute son of Meryl Streep and Dustin Hoffman in the smash hit Kramer vs. Kramer, Justin managed to steal the show. His nod for Best Supporting Actor made him the youngest person in history to get one. Justin kept working in movies through the 1980s, but then took a 10-year break to focus on his studies. From 1998 to 2003, he ran the Slam Dunk Film Festival that he started. He now works at iReturn Marketing, LA, as a sales director. Jackie Earl Haley Jackie began acting in TV ads when he was six years old. Before getting his big break as Kelly Leak, a baseball bad boy in the Bad News Bears brand, he was a guest star on a lot of popular 1970s TV shows. He went away from movies for a long time, starting in 1993. When he came back, he was nominated for the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his part in Little Children. He now lives in San Antonio, Texas with his third wife and two kids. Harvey Stevens There's no better way to forget about sleep for a few days than to watch The Omen, a scary movie from 1976. Harvey Stevens, a child actor who was four years old, played the Antichrist and made sure that no one would use the name Damien for their child. Harvey was the epitome of a one-hit wonder. He failed at the box office after that. He did get some small parts, but soon after he was no longer working in the business. He lives with his family in England now and works as a futures trader there. Suzanne Crow She played Tracy on the 1970s show The Partridge Family. When she played her tambourine, she made everyone smile. Even though it was only her second tryout, she did excellently and was a great addition to the group. Suzanne's time in Hollywood came to an end at the end of the 1970s. She did get a few small parts, but her last credit was in a TV movie from 1980 called Child of Separation. She passed away in 2015 when she was 52 years old. Alison Arngrim She tried out for the parts of both Mary and Laura Ingalls, but in the end, she got the part of Nellie Olson on the historical drama show Little House on the Prairie in the 1970s. In the end, it was hard for her to break out of the Nellie Olson mold. When the show was over, she started doing stand-up comedy. She also stays busy by working with several charities. A book she wrote in 2010 called Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, How I Survived Nellie Olson and Learned to Love Being Hated, was a big hit with readers in the New York Times. Pamela Sue Martin The first job Pamela Sue Martin had in show business was as a model when she was only 17. However, it didn't take long for her to move on to acting, as seen in Poseidon Adventure in 1972. Martin may be known to you as Nancy Drew, the young detective on the TV show The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew Mysteries. People also know her as the first person to play the socialite Fallon Carrington Colby on the ABC nighttime soap opera Dynasty. 
Martin hasn't been in the news for a while, but she played Harriet Grosset in the third Nancy Drew TV series. Mike Lookinland. When we talk about the other people on the Brady Bunch, we have to talk about Bobby, who was played by Mike Lookinland, a former child star. Lookinland, who's now 59 years old, played the youngest brother on the ABC comedy from 1969 to 1974. He also played the lead role in many of the show's sequels and spinoffs. Once his time as a Brady was over, Lookinland worked as a cameraman in the theater business. He quit this job soon after, though, and now he runs his own business in Salt Lake City, Utah, cutting concrete countertops to order. Sean Cassidy You may know Sean Cassidy as one of the stars of the Hardy Boys mysteries. He's an American singer, actor, writer, and director. Besides that, he played a lead role in Breaking Away and worked for a while on the afternoon soap opera General Hospital. Cassidy did almost all of his work as a stage actor in the 1980s and 1990s, appearing on Broadway and in London's West End. Cassidy's also been writing and producing TV shows since the mid-1990s. He's created and produced several shows such as American Gothic, Roar, and Invasion. Leif Garrett Since Leif Garrett was born and raised in sunny California, it's not a surprise that he started working in show business when he was only five years old. Garrett did a lot of different kinds of playing jobs. He starred with his sister in the horror movie Devil Times Five. Still, the act of Jimi Henderson and Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice was one of the star's most memorable. But Garrett became famous as a singer in the 1970s. He later went back to acting, though. Following that, Garrett had had a few run-ins with the law. However, he seems to be on the right track now. Mackenzie Phillips because her father was the lead singer of the Mamas and the Papas, Mackenzie Phillips was born into fame. Still, she got out from under his shade and became her performer. She was in both American Graffiti and the comedy One Day at a Time as Julie Mora Cooper Horvath, a girl who was both rough and sweet. Many things have been said about Phillips' personal life since she was a kid star, but now she seems to be doing better than ever. She even played Pam Valentine in the reboot of One Day at a Time. Jodie Foster No matter who you are or how old you are, everyone knows Jodie Foster. The well-known actress, who's now 57 years old, started working as an actress when she was just three years old. Foster's first acting job was in the TV comedy Mayberry RFD when she was six years old. After that, she kept getting acting jobs, though she sometimes had trouble stepping into adult parts. It looks like she found her way, though, because she's continued to star in and direct movies. David Cassidy David Cassidy was an American actor, singer-songwriter, and musician who was half-brother to Sean Cassidy. Most likely, you know him as Keith Partridge, Shirley Partridge's son on the 1970 musical show The Partridge Family. His real-life mom, Shirley Jones, played Shirley Partridge. This part turned out to be the one that made Cassidy a teen hero and pop superstar. It was said that Cassidy died of liver failure in 2017 at the age of 67, even though he stayed famous after the show ended. Willie Ames Willie Ames has become well-known over the years since he started playing as a child. Ames is an actor, film and TV director, producer, and author. He's probably best known for playing Tommy Bradford on the TV show Eight is Enough in the 1970s, Buddy Lembick on the comedy Charles in Charge in the 1980s, and the main character in the direct-to-video series Bible Man. Ames has been busy since he turned 60. He spends time with his family and sometimes appears in Hallmark TV movies like Love on the Menu. Kathy Coleman Kathy Coleman may not be famous right now, but there was a time when everyone knew her name. Coleman is famous for her role as Holly Marshall on the kids' TV show Land of the Lost. She used to be an actor when she was younger. Coleman, who is now 58 years old, hasn't done any acting in a few years, but she did interviews and audio tracks for all three seasons of the Land of the Lost DVDs, which are no longer being made. In April 2015, Coleman wrote a book called Lost Girl, the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me, Kathleen. Ralph Carter Ralph Carter is an American singer and actor who's best known for playing Michael Evans on the CBS show Good Times. 
Michael Evans is the youngest child of Florida and James Evans Sr. You might not have known that Carter has been on Broadway. He got his start there when he was nine years old and played in The Me Nobody Knows. Carter's no longer in the public eye as of today. He's now working with a New York City theater group that honors black theater. Kim Richards. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills on Bravo may have made most of you aware of her as Kyle's bigger, moody sister. Kim Richards was more than just a TV star at one point in her life, believe it or not. She started as a kid actor and became well-known for her parts in Nanny and the Professor, Escape to Witch Mountain, and its follow-up, Returned from Witch Mountain. After going through some hard times, Kim, who is now 55 years old, spends her time with her family and out of the press. Erin Moran Erin Moran was born and raised in California. She got her first acting job when she was five years old for a first federal bank commercial. After being in a few TV shows, Moran got her big break when she was cast as Richie Cunningham's sassy younger sister, Joni Cunningham, on the hit comedy Happy Days. Before moving on to other starring jobs, Moran was in a spin-off show and the last season of Happy Days. Still, the well-known actor had been having a rough time before she died in 2017. Brandon Cruz He's best known for his part as Eddie Corbett on the comedy drama show The Courtship of Eddie's Father, which he got when he was only five years old. Even after the show ended, Brandon Cruz kept working as a child actor for a few more years. But in the late 1970s, he started to focus on punk rock. He's even sung for bands like Flipper, Dr. No, and the Dead Kennedys. And it's also known that Cruz has worked behind the scenes on TV as an assistant producer on the cartoon show South Park and other shows. Parker Stevenson Parker Stevenson is an American actor who's best known for his roles as Frank Hardy on the TV shows The Hardy Boys in the 1970s and Craig Pomeroy on Baywatch. Stevenson is still getting a lot of attention, even though some of you may be too young to remember him. He plays Louis Osmond, the Academy Director in the Netflix show Greenhouse Academy, right now. The young Stevenson has also worked as a photographer since he was young. He has a photography website called Shadow Works, where you can see his work. Robbie Benson Try to tell us that Robbie Benson wasn't the biggest teen hero in the late 1970s after seeing those bright blue eyes. Look at him for real. In any case, Benson became well-known after being in several sports movies, such as One on One and Ice Castles. He became famous when he played the role of the Beast in the Disney cartoon movie, Beauty and the Beast, and all of its sequels and spin-offs. Benson has tried his hand at directing TV shows since then, including a few episodes of Friends and written a book about his life. Tommy Kirk Tommy Kirk became famous very quickly with movies like Old Yeller and The Absent-Minded Professor, but their fame didn't last long because Hollywood was different back then. Kirk's love interest got him in trouble with his boss at Disney, and the actor had a hard time finding work. In the 1970s, he quit the movie business for good and started a carpet cleaning company. He died in 2021 when he was 79 years old. Catherine Beaumont Miss Catherine Beaumont is a real Disney princess. She voiced Alice in the 1951 version of Alice in Wonderland and Wendy in the 1953 version of Peter Pan. In 1988, Disney gave her a Legend Award for her work. Beaumont got a degree in teaching after having small roles in two Disney movies. She became a first grade teacher and quit after 36 years. What would it be like to learn math from Alice herself? Bobby Driscoll Disney is known for having strict contracts these days, but Bobby Driscoll was one of the first people to have to follow the company's rules. The first players to sign a deal with Disney were Driscoll and Luann Patton. They were in Song of the South and So Dear to My Heart together and were called the Sweetheart Team. However, Bobby later turned to drugs and bad behavior, just like many of Disney's kid stars. Sad to say, the star died in 1968 when he was just 31 years old. Kevin Kerkorin A lot of people know Kevin Anthony Moochie Kerkorin for playing the same role in a bunch of different movies. 
For as long as Walt Disney could remember, Kerkorin was always the crazy animal lover, and people always called him Moochie. Kevin kept working in Hollywood as a producer and director after he got tired of acting. He died in 2015 when he was 66 years old because he was sick. Patty Duke Patty Duke's work started on Broadway, but when the show she was in turned into a movie, she quickly went to Hollywood. She got her show three Emmys, an Oscar, and two Golden Globes, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame over time. Duke kept working in Hollywood to the end of her life, with her last appearance in 2015. She died in 2016 at the age of 69, which was sad. Bill Mummy I Dream of Jeannie, Bewitched, and The Twilight Zone were some of the big shows that Bill Mummy was in when he first started acting in the 1960s. He also did speech work, wrote books, played music, and became a movie star. Mummy is still working in Hollywood. He's been in more than 400 TV shows and 18 movies throughout his career. Bill's been acting since he was five years old, so it makes sense that his resume is so long. Clint Howard Clint Howard is a great actor in his own right, but not nearly as well-known as his brother, Ron Howard. It makes sense that the actor started his job when he was two years old and was on The Andy Griffith Show. He was born in Hollywood. Clint's still acting today. His most recent role was in Solo, a Star Wars story, which was directed by his brother. Clint's been in more than 17 of Ron's projects. What a great way to show support. Pamela Franklin the Innocence was Pamela Franklin's first movie role. She was only 11 years old at the time. After that, she became famous in Hollywood with parts in Necromancy and the prime of Miss Jean Brody. Franklin quickly became known as a screen queen and a TV actor because of her roles in scary movies and TV shows. The actor hasn't been in a show since the 1980s, either because she hasn't had the chance or because she's just plain bored. Martin Stevens even though he had a great career as a kid star, Martin Stevens did something very different. He quit Hollywood. He first appeared in a movie called The Divided Heart when he was only five years old. Afterward, he was in an amazing 14 movies from 1954 to 1966. When Stevens was done with his last project, a movie called The Witches, he became an engineer instead. The British person now lives in Portugal and likes living a quiet life away from the spotlight.